Well, I never thought about it until you asked about this project. And the more I think about it, um, it's affecting me in a lot of ways, I guess. Five, six years ago, like I remember, you know, paying, you see all these trees laying down. I mean, uh, none of these trees were blown over. Um, so it's a combination of we're getting more and more storms now, later in the fall, you know, with heavier winds. You know, in the last five, six years, we've had so many heavy storms in the fall, they just keep knocking them over. I started in 1997. Uh, I would have been 27 when I started. I'm a trapper. Um, I used to hunt years ago, uh, but the way my work schedule was going, you know, 30 years ago, you couldn't hunt on Sundays. Um, so an older gentleman used to live down the road. Uh, he took me trapping as a kid two or three times. And that's how I got into trapping. I just, it's, it's something that I can do 24 seven. You know, I can do it all night long if I want to. Uh, in trapping, you're not using a gun to shoot anything. You're using a trap to capture it. And there are different kinds of traps that you can use. There's killer traps, live traps. I enjoy getting out. Uh, to me, it's a challenge. You know, you're going out there, you're trying to catch a wild animal. You're trying to get him, him to narrow down to one little specific spot so you can catch him. Uh, you know, I just enjoy the challenge. Uh, there's days that I go out and if i don't catch anything at least i was out you know at least i'm i'm out there and, you know i'm out enjoying nature because i'm i'm a trapper i'm harvesting the animal but i want it done as fast as possible right? mm -hmm. i don't want that animal to suffer at all that's why we all have to use certain traps okay and this gets fast as possible Like, as far as right here at this point in time, right, climate change is affecting me because of, you know, currently our, our government has a carbon tax on fuel to help fight climate change. So, therefore, the price of fuel that I use in my truck and my four-wheeler to go out to go traveling, the price is up on that. Eventually, there will be a change in the habitats around here. It is bound to happen. And, and as habitats change, then the animals that use that habitat, they're going to change. Other ways it affects me is fur is a world commodity, right? It's sold on the world market. Like all my furs get shipped to a huge auction in Ontario, and there's buyers from all over the world, from China, Russia, Europe, everywhere in the world. They all come to these huge auctions. So the thing is, is that if uh, the weather's getting warmer, then people aren't going to want to have warm fur garments like they used to. So that means the demand for fur will be dropping some as, as the climates get warmer. So that's going to affect me as well because then I won't be able to sell what I produce. So if I can't sell it, then there's no sense in me going out and trapping. If we can't sell what we catch, then there's no sense in us going out and catching it, right? Here for now. Uh, Eventually, for now. climate change is, is going to change the tree species that we have here. Because they're already <laughs> saying that uh, species like balsam fir and some of the, the spruce species that we have here, uh, they're already seeing some changes in them due to climate change. Um, you know, they're like a, they're a boreal forest species, so they like colder weather. So, and the other problem with the two was uh, with it getting a little bit warmer. Uh, a lot of the insect species um, are becoming more common. 
Uh, where before, like, you know, about how many, 50 or 100 years ago, we had really cold winters that, that, that would kill off a lot of the insects. And, uh, and, and these are ones that feed on the trees. And uh, the problem now is we don't have those really cold snaps in the wintertime to kill off the, the bugs that are feeding on the trees. See, the thing about trapping is we're doing it later in the fall. Like, we do it late fall for many reasons, but the main reason is that late fall is when the fur is at its best. Yep. But if we don't get the cold weather in trapping season, then really um, they're not hungry, right? What we're depending on is the fact that they're going to be hungry and they're going to want that bait, mm -hmm. right? Um, but... With climate change, with it being warmer into the fall, uh, they're, they're, not, they're not as hungry. So, I mean, they, there's still lots of, uh, believe it or not, it doesn't look like it, but there's still lots of natural food here for them, right? So if they're filling up on the natural food, they may not want that meat bait that I threw in the bucket, right? But if it's cold, things are frozen, there's a little bit of snow on the ground, they're going to want to take whatever they can get for food. Mm. So with it being warmer, maybe, you know, maybe they don't want that. Um, another issue I thought of the other night while I was sitting at the house is this fall I know I'm going to have problems with bears because um, usually uh, it's cold by now and the bears are thinking about going into hibernation and uh, so when especially when Martin Fisher season comes around here in another uh, week and a half to two weeks um, usually by then they've gone, they've gone into hibernation right so I have no problem with them but with it being warmer they're staying out longer and a bear is just an eating machine they'll eat anything right because they want all that fat before they hibernate for the winter so i'm going to have problems with bears raiding my trap sets and what they'll do is i had one out here about three years ago i came up and if you notice uh my trap to fasten the cables to the trees right um that will basically hold a bear because uh, I had a situation where a bear put his paw in, the trap caught him by the paw, right? And he had a trap circle, was called, dug down about a foot in the ground to 10 feet around that tree. And the tree was about that big around, and he, the trap was attached to and he had every bit of bark and limbs for 10 feet up that tree gone. The tree clawed, he was that mad, because I had him by the paw. But then after a while, he was strong enough to pull it out. But what he did after that was he followed my tracks and every bucket that he came to, he learned and smack it, smack the bucket so the trap would stay attached to the tree, right? And the bucket would go flying, go and eat the bait. He, huh. he, he went around one day to 12 to my trap sets. I followed his tracks in the snow. But then thank God he just kept on, like he didn't come back, he kept on going wherever he was. He was, must have been heading for his den then or something, right? He kept on going. So, you know, you know, I guess that's one another way that climate change is starting to, you know, affect us because it's, it's affecting the timing of the animals going into hibernation. You know, uh, the cold isn't forcing them to want to pack on that weight for the winter. You know, we, we want to get in that extreme cold that we used to get. So, yeah, I, it's, it's starting to change things a little bit. The, the world's aware of what's going on with the climate change issue, but... Nobody seems to really want to do a whole heck of a lot about it because to do something about it is going to really upset the basically, uh, you know, the economics of the world. And nobody wants to, wants to lose a dollar just to try to save the planet. And that's uh, thinking that's got to get changed.